Welcome back to Beholder to One Shot. Today we are here with Ellen, Mary, and Alan, and then Greg and I, of course, and we are playing Savage Worlds. So I'm just going to go down the list and have everybody introduce themselves, and then Ellen will go into a brief description of what Savage Worlds is. This will be a two shot. Uh, so this week and two weeks from now will be our two parter of this game. And some of us, it's our first or second time playing. So I'm excited. Uh, Ellen, uh, why don't you go ahead and start first with your intro? Okay. Hi, I'm Ellen Delina. I just waved, even though we're not doing video. <laughs> I thought it's fine. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter 24 uh, 7 at um, Ellen underscore Delina. And I run a Savage Worlds podcast called The Birdhouse Mysteries that you can find also on Twitter at Birdhouse Mist, M Y S T. It is a fantasy podcast and we do a lot of goofy things. I'm also, actually, this is a good other thing to say, I am also on Alan's stream playing Savage Worlds, uh, Savage Ravenloft. Well, I guess we'll jump into Alan then next because that brought us right in there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, hi, my name's Alan Holloway, and you can find me pretty much on every social platform at CFTRPG. I'm mostly known for running a Twitch channel and a YouTube channel where I showcase uh, various RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons as well as Savage Worlds. And um, yeah, so I'm really excited to play this uh, two shot. Uh, Deadlands is one of my favorite Wild West or Weird West, I should say games mary so hi everybody uh i am mary kate mead uh you can find me on twitter on uh at nerd on wheels 15 uh i am also over on the gm table uh for the tales from 2000s cast as well as the uh hero journeys where we make shows for performers by for by performers and i'm super excited to be here today yeah all right, and then Ellen, would you like to describe the basics of a Savage World? Uh, sure. We, today we are playing, um, the system is Savage Worlds, and the game specifically is Deadlands, uh, the Weird West. We are using the new um, edition of Deadlands that just came out, and with an old module for the previous edition of Deadlands called Coffin Rock. So um, any old fans of... Deadlands may have played this or heard of it before. Uh, Savage Worlds is not a D20 system. Uh, you pick your skills and attribute die from the other remaining dice. And you all, your heroes, the people you will be hearing today, always use a wild die, a D6, that they roll in addition to their skill die. And that gives them an extra chance to be heroic. So that's the... The very basic, um, everybody starts with three bennies, unless you are unlucky or extra lucky, which I believe Nikki is lucky. Um, yes. Excuse me, Annabelle is lucky. So you will start with four. And bennies are little chips that you use to uh, re-roll rolls that you didn't like the results of, or use them to soak wounds if you take damage. Or a couple other things, but those are the two main things you do. Um, the basic target number for, or DC in other games, um, for this game is four. You need to beat a four. So even if you are rolling a D4, you have a decent chance of making it. If you're rolling a D6, you have an even better chance. So that's the very, very basic level of Savage Worlds. And I will try to call out what we are doing as we are playing so that everybody understands. Anybody have any questions before we get started? No, I'm good. No, I think I'm pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm excited to get started. I'm ready to get into the game. <laughs> okay, cool. So the year is 1883. Rising up from the plains of Kansas and crossing westward into Colorado brings a traveler to the Rocky Mountains. The rugged Colorado ter territory is home to many hundreds of great peaks in excess of 10,000 feet, riddled with seams of valuable minerals. Countless boom towns have sprung up to drag their fortunes from the Earth's rocky clutches. Coffin Rock began, began as just such a town, founded when copper was discovered in the surrounding mountains. Smaller claims came and went, and the town's fortunes rose and fell accordingly. 
but it was one big strike and the man who made it that shaped the town's history and its current predicament. So, you four are a group. I don't know if you have ever met each other before. We didn't decide that ahead of time. If you've been to the bar, you know who Annabelle is. <laughs> and if you've been to the church, you would know uh, Brother Wolf as well. The bar and the church are the two main gathering places, so there is a decent chance. Um, but you guys are not from Coffin Rock. You are traveling to Coffin Rock. Oh. So your bar and your church are back east somewhere. And you are heading out west to Colorado. You were each given a job. You were hired on to a job to capture or kill a bandit by the name of Hank Mayhem Archer. He is apparently assaulting and uh, stealing from the town of Coffin Rock in Colorado by creating all sorts of ruckus. So the people who hired you were not completely clear about who they were representing or why they wanted Hank Archer apprehended, nor did they give that much information about Coffin Rock except to say that you should keep your wits about you while you're in town. And with that, the four of you were grouped together and sent on your merry way westward to the town of Coffin Rock. So why don't we go through and have everybody name and describe their characters? So we'll start with Nikki. Annabelle McDrew is probably in her 30s, but she did not ask a lady her age. And she has brown with some gray in it, but she'll just say they're highlights in her hair as it's put up in a nice little bun. Usually she spends her days behind a bar at a saloon. But right now, she just seems very adamant and determined to get this job done. You can easily see quite a few guns on her, and also the smell of whiskey is always very present. All right, Greg. All right, uh, Brother Wolf, a relatively uh, gaunt individual, not um, very strong by any stretch of the imagination. Late 40s, I would say, uh, very large mutton chops on the face. Uh, I wear very large spectacles, uh, like Coke rim glasses. And I usually spend my days by spreading the the word of the omnipotent. All right, Mary? Uh, Well, Eliza O'Day is about five. Uh, she is very well dressed with uh, dark gray and black hair and uh, just always put up just right. Uh, she always is one to flash a smile. Uh, she always has a little bit of a twinkle in her eye. Uh, she's uh, slightly pale, uh, but uh, almost has a Snow White of the Wild West type look to her. Uh, she's wearing a nice dress with a, a nice corset. Well, she uses her beauty to her advantage. Uh, there's a lot of onlookers, so, well, you might as well get something out of it. <laughs> and Alan? Well, what can be said about Jericho McCraw? Uh, he is um, a bounty hunter, and after leaving uh, the Union, it's basically what he's been doing all this time. He's in his late 30s has long hair but he's usually wearing his stetson so he just kind of combs it back um he has a mustache and a and a goatee and uh, most of the time he's just got some stubble on the sides uh, as he doesn't shave too often but whenever he can get to a bathhouse he he does clean up nice i would imagine that as we are riding out west um maybe are we taking horses or are we riding in a carriage um you probably took the train to as okay. far as you could go and then you got on some horses okay yeah i would imagine on the train i mean he would probably join uh annabelle for uh some whiskey at the bar uh, but overall he's just kind of uh stoic but every now and then he just kind of pulls out from his uh, vest the uh, wanted poster of our bounty Mr. Hank Mayhem Archer and uh, he just keeps looking at that for a lot of money those dollar signs so it is this motley crew 
that rolls up on horseback into the town of Coffin Rock. As you approach, you can see the one dusty main street ahead of you. It is scarce. It's empty of people. You can see on your right as you approach from the south what looks to be some sort of theater. It has a dilapidated sign that once was probably beautifully painted that says the Jewel Theater. And um, this is what you see as you ride on into town. No people. You don't hear much of anything on the wind. It is about high noon, and you have made it to Coffin Rock. Place is a little dead, isn't it? Seems like the Lord will have some uh, serious work to do here. Uh, Annabelle will take a sip of her whiskey and just go shore the Lord. <laughs> right, maybe we should take a look around, get a lay of the land. The main features you can see from Main Street are off to the east, a large white and blue church. You can see a bell tower, but you don't hear the bell. And directly uh, diagonal across the street from the theater appears to be some manner of building. You can't quite tell from the outside what it is, and nor can you tell what the uh, two-story building on the other side of the street is either. But everything you see has a layer of dust and grime on it. You see dilapidated buildings that are out of use, and even the ones that look like they are currently in use are not well kept up. This place has definitely seen some better days. <laughs> Indeed. So where are you guys heading? What are you looking for? Well, I know I know what I would uh, prefer to do. Also, I, I will say that I, I will probably be changing accents five or six different times because I can't remember what the initial one I gave him was already. So I personally would like to go uh, check out the church. It's my home away from home, if you will. But uh, put it up to a vote. Where, where would everybody like to go? Which street are we coming in on? You're coming in on Main Street. Main Street from the south? Yes, from the south. So the Jewel Theater is on your right. Okay. Well, I mean, we could go that way. There looks like there's a hotel over there. Erica, it's Bip. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with Lady Annabelle there. I think the hotel, Brother Wolf, as much as I'd like to visit the Lord in his house, I prefer to get my effects aligned first. Very fair, very fair. All right. So as you um, take your horses and walk down 3rd Avenue heading eastward, um, everybody make a notice check. So take your notice die, whatever die type you have for that, and your wild die, your d6, and roll both of those and take the higher one. Just a normal success for me. Oh, what was the number? Uh, five. Five? Okay. It's going to be a four for me. All right. Four for me as well. Okay. Annabelle got a two. Two? Okay. So everybody other than Annabelle hears what sounds like shrieking on the wind as you pass this dilapidated schoolhouse on the way to the hotel and towards the church. Is it coming from the schoolhouse or is it coming like just on the wind? I know I don't hear it personally. You don't but... know. Um, it was coming in from the direction of the schoolhouse. Okay. It's a shriek that turns into laughter. Did anybody hmm. else just hear that? From the <sighs> tip of a flash, she's like, hear what? Okay. Um, maybe you could lay off a beverage, uh, but... No, I, I could have sworn that I heard a screechy noise. Probably nothing, but, well, maybe we should check it out. Mm. But the wind coming from that dilapidated schoolhouse. You know, mine. Here to do a job. Let's fall minds focused. Shall we, Miss Day? That sounds quite nice. Uh, uh, you go first, I. In case there's anything, I don't really... Well, I'm a lady. I don't really get into the messy stuff. So you guys are carrying on down the street? Yes, I believe so. Uh, beeline it towards the hotel. Poor. Okay. <laughs> it's like, we hear nothing. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> so as you approach the hotel, you can see that some of the letters that give it its name have fallen off 
it reads the Cry a River Hotel, where it mm. previously read something else. Oh, that's a catchy name. I can think of a few better, but um, I wasn't here when it was built, so who am I to say? Shall we get a room then? Yeah. Might as well. Yeah, a ring would be nice. I don't know, just something about that schoolhouse. It's like, look, call it a hunch, but maybe check after that. I, I can't see anything wrong with that. At least if it's just gonna ease your uh, curiosities, I'm sure we can go and look. I'm sure, it's just an empty building. All right, so you guys make your way into the hotel. It is a uh, door that rings a little bell as you enter. There is a desk in front of you. Uh, it looks like it once was beautifully maintained and well appointed, but it's like the rest of the town you've seen so far has seen better days. Uh, there's a man behind the counter who looks a little bit teary-eyed as he uh, looks up at you. May may I help you? So I like motion to let Eliza go ahead. Uh, Eliza walks forward and uh, goes up to the man and says, well, uh, we are traveling through town and well we're pretty tired after the day we've been through do you happen to have any rooms i mean look i i could sleep in the church i guess but it would just be so cold is there any way you could help us sure um how many rooms would you need it would be uh two dollars per night uh well uh hmm Boys, can you stay in the same room, or would you like separate spaces? I guess, how many do you have? I have as many as you need. We don't get many travelers here in Coffin Rock. I don't mind sharing a a room with Mr. McCrawl here. That'd be fine. He seems like a right nice fellow. Well, then, I guess, uh, would that be two rooms, uh, if I'm not counting wrong? And he just nods, and he goes to grab keys from the, um wall of keys behind him, you can see that all of the keys to all of the rooms are available. So he really does have, you know, his pick for you guys. I hope he gives us the nicest. (laughs) So he um, picks two and uh, hands them to you and he says it'll be the top of the stairs, uh, first right and first left. Uh, I do have a question. While he was turning around and trying to uh, get us a key, does he have any written ledger that might be easy to see if I just peeked over the side of the little table. Um, yeah, he has a ledger in front of him. I just want to check to see maybe if uh, any of the people we're looking for might have signed in or something. Um, make a notice roll. Out of five. Five? Okay. You see just one name written down, and the uh, the ledger looks to be smudged and uh, almost tear-stained. Um, the name you see is Smith. Well, that doesn't help much, but at least it's a start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'll just smile at him. He um, hands you the keys and he says, names to write down? Anybody's name? Any particular? McDrew, it's fine. McDrew, and he writes that down. And for the gentleman? Uh, Wolfwood. And he goes ahead and he writes that down as well. Crawl. Um, he looks up at you after he finishes writing. He says, is there anything else you needed? Well, I'm rather lonely, um, but other than that, I, I do have a question, and she'll lean in a little bit closer. You look a little less though something's bothering you. Is there anything going on? I, I'm a good person that likes to listen to things. I, I just want to help whoever I can. You look so a little bit of help. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll persuasion. Okay. Uh, I got a five. Five? He looks at you as though he's seeing somebody else talking to him. And he says, no, no, I'm I'm sorry. I, I couldn't trouble you like that. Uh, I, I appreciate it, but I, I couldn't, couldn't possibly. It's no trouble at all, sugar. It is fine. I, it's been such a long day and and just getting to hang out with another person. I, and she leans in a little close. These guys are nice, but, well, it would be nice to talk to someone new. I've been rather lonely as well. Well, you see, my my wife, she passed away. She died last winter, and I just haven't been able to get over it. But, um, unfortunately, there's nothing to be done about that. 
I'm sorry, dear. Yes, very sorry indeed. Uh, just know that she she's with the Omnipotent now. A better place. Certainly a better place than Coffin Rock. I drink to that. And he, like, kind of half turns away from you guys. You can tell he's not busy, but he's just kind of giving you space to leave if that's what you're going to do. You're free to go upstairs, check out the rooms, or you're free to do whatever you'd like. I mean, might as well drop our leg- luggage off upstairs, no? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go upstairs. I'll, I'll walk. watch him a little bit, but I'll head upstairs, drop off my stuff. Uh, see now, probably see about the schoolhouse. Okay. On the way up the stairs, uh, Brother Wolf, you yes. catch sight of yourself in one of the windows along the stairwell and out of the corner of your eye you just see yourself looking incredibly, incredibly worried like something is on your mind just kind of uh, look over to the uh, to the, the window and kind of like shake my head like I'm trying to get something out of my eyes did anybody else uh, happen oh, never mind I'm sure it was nothing <laughs> and I'll just uh, continue upstairs to heading to the room alright so the rooms are um, not lit when you go in. It's the middle of the day, but the windows are not haven't been cleaned. They're dusty and the uh, shades are drawn. They uh, seem clean enough. They're not anything to write home about in terms of uh, being well appointed or anything like that. But they'll serve you well enough and the doors lock. So you're able to leave your things there and be reasonably secure that they will remain there. I certainly slept in worse places than this. Uh, Brother Wolf, if you don't mind, I'll take this bed here. Far be it for me to tell you where to sleep. I'll take the uh, the other cot. Can I see the schoolhouse from the wind? From is there a window in the room? Or you said there were. So can I can I see the schoolhouse from this window? You guys, let's see. Yeah, uh, you should be able to. Are you looking out the window at it specifically? Yeah, I, I know that Miss O'Day wanted to have a gander at it, so I'm just going to look from this vantage point. Do I notice anything other than what we saw beforehand when we passed by it? A uh, roll notice. Absolutely. Uh, that's four. Four? Mm-hmm. All right. You see the schoolhouse. It looks dilapidated. Uh, the roof is partially caved in on the side that you can see. Through that hole, uh, it looks like you catch a glimpse of someone moving inside. You can't see very well, and it was only a second, but you saw movement inside. Uh, well, I doubt very much Mr. Archer would be hiding out in schoolhouse, but best go prepared. And with that, he would uh, unholster one of his frontier colts and just ensure that uh, there is a bullet in each cylinder and uh, just kind of tests the hammer slides it back into the holster and uh, pulls over his duster to cover it. When you're ready, brother, we'll be on our way. Of course, of course. Um, while he was doing all of that, I took a moment to go around the room and check all of the uh, the drawers and uh, stuff to make sure everything is intact, um, as well as to uh, making sure that each of the nightstands has a copy of the Bible. <laughs> Okay. Um, one of the nightstands did not have a copy of the Bible. The other one did. Well, that just won't do. Luckily, I always bring a spare, and I'll uh, go into my bag and take out a copy of uh, one of the many copies that I have on my person of the, the good book, and I will place it in the uh, currently empty shelf. Okay. All right. Never leave home without a few. So when she walks in her room, uh, immediately pulls out all her guns and then starts checking them to make sure they're in working condition because it's been a couple hours since she checked and uh, she does the same thing that Jericho did she checks to make sure they're fully loaded even though she knows they are and that uh, they are within easy access okay easy enough for you to do you're an expert at this and um, as you check all of your weapons they are in perfect condition despite the uh, dust and grime that has clung to you through your travel so you are good to go. Fantastic. Eliza will uh, find a little table and get out one of her spare handkerchiefs and kind of dust it off. She doesn't want to get her bags dirty. Uh, it sets everything up, gets a little hanger if they have a little closet to hang up some of her nice dresses because, well, they've been f- folded up for so long. But 
she eventually gets herself a little prim and proper uh, and a little powder uh, to her nose. And so she's ready to go. When Eliza turns around, Annabelle's drinking again. She just burps when she meets her eyes and she's like, what? <laughs> and if there's a Bible in her room, she stuffs it under somewhere else. <laughs> okay, you do find a Bible in your room. Um, you find two, actually, so maybe it was the one missing from the other room. <laughs> and you go ahead and you just, like, shove them under the bed or wherever you'd like. Under the bed where I don't have to look at it. We can take it with us and use it as a uh, fire fodder. That is a good idea. Uh, you think well. Brother Wolf might not like it very well, but... I mean, we just claimed that the good lord protected us and that mom didn't need how you talk to those kind of people. It's fair. But the good, the good brother doesn't come much to... People like that don't usually come to the saloon, so I don't get to talk to those ones. I usually talk to the ones that are already too drunk to understand what you're saying anyway, so you gotta use a little bit of force. <laughs> I get that. But luckily, I don't think we are gonna have too much of a problem with that if I have anything to say about it. That's fine. I'll let you do the talking. I'll do the drinking. Eliza gives a nod, probably heads downstairs after she's cleaned herself up a bit. Uh, I'll look over at... Uh, Brother McCraw, and I'll just go. Do you, you ever get the feeling that you're, somebody's talking about you behind your back? Mm, all the time, brother. Let's uh, let's get this over with. All right. Seems like the less time we spend here, the better, anyway. All right. So you guys uh, meet up downstairs. Uh, you don't see the proprietor, whose name you did not ask. <laughs> How rude of us. But he also didn't introduce himself, so there's that too. Alright. He didn't technically ask our names until he needed them. That's true. And even then, he's like, or whatever you want to put down on the list. We could have <laughs> said if our name was Joe Schmo and he would have been happy. <laughs> so the day is yours. What are you guys going to do? I think Miss O'Day wanted to check out the school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, begrudgingly. Uh, approach in the schoolhouse. Uh, Eliza it looks a little worried. Normally, she has a more confident, calm physique, but uh, you can definitely tell that something's a little off, but she approaches, uh, pushing through it. Uh, I'll look over at her and I'll say, Come, Sister O'Day. Anything can be done with the Lord's strength. Okay. Please don't. I, I, I appreciate that, and I really do, but I don't know you. You don't know me. And look, I just know your audience, okay? And she'll head forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um, pull out my Winchester and just be ready just in case from a distance. And as we get closer, I'll switch it out. But for now, it's the Winchester. All right. Uh, so you approach the schoolhouse. Are you uh, going in? I think we should uh, step back a moment and maybe do a little uh, recon work. Is it a, uh, is the schoolhouse open all the way around? Like, is there any barricades or walls in between us and the schoolhouse? Um, it's just sitting on the street. So you can, the front main door is accessible. You don't know whether or not it's locked unless you go up to it. If you're going to go around it, uh, there are a few windows on each side. And there is also a back door um, around the opposite side of the schoolhouse from where the front door is and that one is um partially ajar it's off its hinges a little bit and you can see into the gloom it does look dusty and grimy inside and like there hasn't there haven't been school children there for quite some time well i'm not usually one to rush into anything so uh i'll leave that to the three of you as you're outside you hear on the wind and you all hear it this time uh, the sound of laughter, and it seems to be coming from the schoolhouse, but you're also not sure it could be on the wind as well. What the fuck was that? That's what we all heard earlier, but it is quite disturbing. Whatever that making that noise is not meant to stay alive right now. It's not the joy it's children playing. <laughs> well, let's make this quick. I mean, does this sound of laughter, does it sound like children laughter or or just like just like adult laughter? It sounds like a child. Um, it does not sound, it's not like, oh, happy children are laughing. It is a sound that kind of chills you a little bit for reasons you don't fully understand. Okay, I don't think Jericho would necessarily pull his cult out right in this moment out on the street. 
Uh, definitely pulls the duster back behind the holster so that he can have easy access to it. But he makes it a point not to stand in front of Annabelle with her Winchester, knowing that she's been drinking all day. <laughs> <laughs> Only been drinking a little bit. Looks at quarter of the bottle whiskey gun. <laughs> all right. So what are you guys doing? Are you heading in or are you heading elsewhere? I think we're heading in. Are you at the front door or are you at the back door? Uh, well, whichever seems like it would be the easiest to get in and out of or at least it's here to explain the way should we get caught. Okay. Um, you didn't see anyone on the street when you were on 3rd Avenue. Uh, it was still empty. Um, and you didn't notice anyone around. Like, the building next door is a two-story building. And from what a quick glance, you don't see anyone walking past windows or anything like that. And you don't hear any chatter or footsteps or anything to, that would suggest that there are people around. All right. Well, that makes things considerably easier. So, yeah, I guess we, uh, at least Eliza's going to go in. Uh, she kind of reaches in her pocket and uh, is ready just in case. Okay. So, are, are you going in the back door or are you going in the front door? The back door is partially ajar. Uh, back door. Uh, it'll be a bit easier. All right. I mean, can, um, can we split it? Can we say two take the back and two take the front? Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. I would very much prefer to go through the front door, personally. All right, who's going up front? Um, I can go on the front. Uh, I have a question. Does drinking actually have any negative effects? Because it doesn't specify in the habit. It just says if I don't drink, X happens. If you don't drink, you have negative effects. So we're going to assume that your tolerance is pretty high. Um, unless you are getting rip roaring drunk, I'm not going to have you um, okay. rolling with any negatives. But if if the day goes on and you finish that bottle, we might re-explore that. Depending on how bad the day is, I will roll something to determine how much she if she drinks more than what her allotted is. But okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, okay, cool. Perhaps Brother Wolf and Miss Me Drew uh, approach from the front. Though I would say. Yes, that uh, perhaps you shouldered that rifle just in case there is uh, children in the house. Uh, me and Miss O'Day, and we can try the back door. All right. Uh, sounds like a good idea. You're right. Um, she'll put her Winchester out. She'll put her hand on her Colt instead. So this is the front of the schoolhouse. Uh, you are at the door. And inside, you can see about eight ramshackle school desks. There is a uh, desk at the front, uh, like a proctor desk where the um, teacher would have stood. And there are some cupboards along the back and a uh, set of shelves over in between the windows off to the east side. So you guys can see that from the back. Um, the front door, you guys are s still have it closed unless you're going to open it. Yeah, I'll... Um turn the handle and then like kick it open with my foot sh sh shouldn't we knock first there's nobody in the damn school very well far be it for me to tell you what to do with yourself i will knock with my foot as it's opening that's better i appreciate that all right so you knock and throw the door open yep and it creaks and at, for a second there is nothing and then suddenly desks are flying everywhere and you just hear raucous, childlike laughter coming from everywhere inside the schoolhouse. And suddenly everything is moving. <sighs> my word. Uh, I will immediately uh, clutch the holy symbol around my, uh, that I wear around my chest. It's just a simple cross. Um, and I have the, my Bible uh, open in one hand, just ready for whatever is gonna be happening here. Okay. And we're going into initiative. So uh, Jericho gets a four, Annabelle gets a two, Eliza gets a ten, Brother Wolf gets an eight, and otherwise you do not know. All right. So up first is uh, Eliza. Um, I guess uh, Eliza will. <laughs> so uh, just to clarify, there's uh, chairs and desks flying everywhere. Uh, is do we see any kind of aberration? Uh, or is it just like a weird supernatural instinct? You hear laughter. You do not see 
any source of it. But All you right, are well, going to try to make a check if you want to locate the source of it. Um, I'm gonna try and do. Eliza will put her hands on her hips. And says, now, children, you know better than trying to do this right now. You are here for school, and we are going to work. Now, get in your desks and let's work. And I guess can I try to persuade them to calm down? <laughs> Roll persuasion. Okay. Uh, I got a five. Five. Okay. Um, you see desks kind of waver and stop in the air for a second before they kind of start moving in your direction. So uh, you get the impression that your persuasion was not successful. All right, plan B. (laughs) But that's it. Okay. Uh, Next up is Brother Wolf. Who? Um... Okay, so this is obviously the first time I've done this. What what consists of a turn in this game? Is it just like D&D where it's like action, movement, and that's about it? Or Yes, pretty much. Okay. okay. So then um, I guess I'll, I'll peer inside and see all of this craziness happening. Um, and then I will attempt to think back to something... Uh, to some stories that I've heard from other uh, brothers at my church back east. Would I be able to do like an occult role to see if I can kind of figure out what is going on here? I mean, clearly it's some kind of a paranormal thing, but... Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead and roll your occult die and your wild die. Okay. So that's this and this. Okay, and if I I rolled a six, so I re-roll that one and then add it? Yeah, if it was on the d6, yes, re-roll it. Yes, they they were both D6s. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, So that is a seven total. Seven? Okay. Um, You know that from stories you've heard, uh, not encounters you've personally had, um, that this sounds like some kind of ghost or poltergeist is making this happen. And to your knowledge, you know that these types of spirits tend to be tied to some manner of remains Hmm. and they cannot be hurt by normal attacks so a gunshot would do nothing and if you were trying to get rid of it you would have to dispose of the remains okay makes sense I don't believe this uh, apparition could be reasoned with Sister O'Day, but uh, a valiant effort nonetheless. And I will turn to Sister McDrew and I will say, we need to find its body. uh, I can only imagine that it's somewhere around here. We just have to we have to find it and dispose of it. That will qualm the beast. I'll dispose of it by shooting it. That's your prerogative. You do what you like. Um, And then I will run around the side of the schoolhouse and see if I can't locate maybe a freshly dug grave or some place where it looks like something may be buried. Okay. And you're going around uh, this way to the east? Yes. All right. So you're going your six. Yes. Okay. Um, Yes. That'll be your next turn to try to look for anything like that. All right. Um, So you'll do that next time. Sounds good. Okay, um, next up is the ghost. So what happens first is you see a girl, a child who is um, completely see-through and looks horrifying, like hair flowing outward and a look of terror and also malice on her face. And she screeches and she laughs. And I need uh, the three of you who can see her to make a fear roll. So you are making a spirit roll at negative two. So roll your spirit and your wild die and we subtract two. All right. I'm going to spend a Benny on that. All right. You said the the bennies are just like re-rolls, right? Yes. Okay. I got a five. Five? All right. That's after subtracting two, I rolled seven. Oh, cool. All right. Um... Even with the Benny, I get a three. Three? All right. I will be rolling on that fear table for Jericho. Uh, That is a three. 
you have an adrenaline surge, fight takes over and he acts as if he has the Joker this action. So you will be able to go whenever you like because of that adrenaline surge. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, Nikki? I got a five. I used a Benny. Okay. All right. So um, that is just Jericho who is afraid, but he has a, a surge of adrenaline that takes over him. Um, so the ghost is going to make its attack first, and then Jericho is free to go as he would like. So the ghost uh, cackles and moves the storm of objects towards the door. Since you guys are not inside the door, um, it will not hit you, but it is right up against the door and um, impeding your ability to enter. So next up can be Jericho, unless you would like to wait. No, I think I think he would go in this instance. Okay. As the fear of seeing this apparition scares him. As those flying objects come towards the door, he immediately will close that door and draw his uh, colt. Okay. I don't know if that will encompass my f- action just to close the door. Um, what else were you going to try to do? Uh, at that point, I think um, I'd probably try to circle back around towards where the others are. Okay. Uh, circle around this way, or? Yeah, yeah, back towards the front. Okay. But yeah, I would close the door and look at Miss O'Day and say, you didn't come here to fight ghost. Well, I see that, but I have one, so um, we got two options. As I see it, we get these ghosts like to rest up. This happens a lot. Uh, just trust me. Or, uh, uh, and then we go about the job that we're actually paid for. But if that's a child that is not able to rest, I can't rest in it until that child. So I hope you understand that. Next up is um, Annabelle. I'm going to. I have a cult as well. With what I was already told by Brother Wolf, would I know about the remains thing? Um, well, he told you, so... And based on the fact that you have the skill, uh, you that would track with your understanding of ghosts and how they work. Can I roll a notice to see if I can see anything in this room with a dead body? Uh, sure. You can make a notice roll. I rolled a four on a d4. All right, re-roll it. Nice. So six. Six? Okay. Peeking in, you see a cabinet in the back, in the far back corner, near where um, Miss O'Day is behind that closed door. You see another cabinet straight back from where you are, and then a, uh, like, a set of shelves with some drawers um, about... Uh, 20 feet away from you towards the right and that is just barely out of the whirlwind of furniture that is currently whirling about the room. I could light it on fire. Will that do it? Uh, light the shelf on fire? I'm calling out to Brother Wolf. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, really about me. I, yes, I, I, I do believe that would take care of the issue. However, I don't, I don't believe these uh, the, the good people here would want their schoolhouse burned to the ground unnecessarily. It's not unnecessary. Fine. Um, my mindset is that it's in the uh, one of the cabinets potentially. So I'm gonna go into the building. Okay. And walk my movement straight ahead. Okay. So into the fray? Sure. All right. Um, when you get there, um, make an agility roll. So roll your agility plus your um, wild die. I got a 10. You got a 10? Like yeah. on a d10 or is it on a d12? d12? Okay, gotcha. All right, well, that's a raise. So you um, are ducking and dodging around these uh, desks and chairs with a palm and you get in front of this uh, chest and you are prepared on the next turn, perhaps, to open it. Okay. All right, so new round of initiative. Jericho gets a jack 
Annabelle gets a three. Eliza gets a five. Brother Wolf gets a seven. And the ghost is actually going first. And so she sees you enter. And she is going to center her torrent of tables and chairs around you. And she's going to shriek with laughter. And I'm going to need another agility roll. Uh, six on a d6. Another six on a d6. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you you dodge out of the way. And um, her shrieks of laughter turn into just shrieks of anger. And um, she disappears. You yeah, hear- I've seen worse. <laughs> So you no longer know where she is specifically. You just continue to see these chairs that you are uh, chairs and desks that you are ducking. Okay. All right. Um, next up is Jericho. All right. Can I see Brother Wolf around the corner there? Yes. Okay. I'll make my way towards him. I'll All just right. move straight towards him. Okay. And you are directly in front of a window, so you can see in. Did you want to run all of the full? No, I, I think that's far enough. Okay. Um, I gave him a sup motion with my head. <laughs> I look at Brother Wolf and I say, fight men all day long, but this is way out of my field, brother. What do we need to do? Well, it's actually uh, a lot simpler than most people would think. We just need to find the remains of the uh, the individual inside and either bury them or get rid of them and it'll just kind of work itself out. L- looking through the window. You really let her go in there alone with whatever that is? I mean, to, to be fair, I didn't I didn't force her inside or anything like that. I, I uh, told her what needed to be done and then I went uh, around the side of the building, as you can see, uh, to try to locate said remains. She walked in on her own accord. Well, what good is that? And he just kind of nods uh, uh, to the symbol that's around your neck. Uh, all right, I'll take a look. Uh, can I m- make a notice just in this general vicinity if, if there's any uh, uh, graves or anything that would resemble uh, where a body might be? Okay, sure. Roll notice. That's a four. Four? Um, yeah. I mean, you see the dirt around you it looks like it gets disturbed every day um just by the wind whipping it around but there's nothing that looks like it's freshly dug or even a a mound of any kind outside doesn't look like there's any graves out here i guess is looks back at the wind looks back through the window annabelle dodging all these flying objects (laughs) It's gonna be in there. Perfect. That's uh, that was the other option. All right. Uh, next up is Brother Wolf. Right. Well, uh, seeing as how there doesn't appear to be anything on the outside of the building that would denote a grave of any kind, um, I will coax my way back around to the front of the building. Okay. And um, I'll peek my head through the door, if I, assuming I can make it that far. Yes. You can make it jump to the door. I can make it up to the door? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'll, I'll peek my, my head in and uh, just slowly grab the holy symbol around my neck. Uh, I'll take a deep breath. All my questions are going to be comparing this to D&D, because that's all I have uh, experience with. Okay, uh, yeah. Is, is there, like, a dash option? Like, can yes, I move double can, my... You can run. If you run, any action you take will be at negative two. Okay. But um, your running die is a D6. It doesn't ace. So if you get a six on it, you just go six more spaces. Um, but you can go ahead and roll that, and we will um, see how far you can go. Okay. So just roll the d6, you said? Yes. All right. Uh, that is a two. Two? All right. Yes. So you can get two spaces inside the building. Uh, you are not yet in the uh, 
whirlwind of desks and chairs. It is about 10 feet in front of you. Oh, goodness me. I wouldn't be walking into the fray like that anyway. Is there anything you wanted to do? I guess just uh, I'll, I'll do what uh, Sister McDrew did and just take a look around the room to see if I can find anything that might uh, house the remains of this creature. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll notice and it'll be at a negative two. Notice at a minus two. Okay. Well, that is a one then. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, you can barely, it's dark in here. It is gloomy and there are desks and chairs flying around everywhere, uh, clattering against the walls, nearly um, hitting Annabelle, who seems to be um, ducking and dodging the best you've ever seen anybody do such a thing. Um, you can see that there are uh, there is a cabinet in the back and a cabinet directly on the wall opposite you and one um, close to you to the right, but you don't have any indication that one would be better than the other for finding what you're looking for. Okay. Um, I will then just look over at Sister McDrew and go, that's uh, quite amazing footwork. I'm very impressed. Thanks, I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that'll be the end of it for me. Okay. Um, next up is Eliza. So, Eliza, I guess, to try and locate if, like, just something out of place that possibly the ghost is trying to protect. Um, she got mad when we tried to throw stuff at, or when we tried to come towards her area. I just want to see if there's anything slightly out of place. Okay. So you're looking in. Yeah, I, Eliza doesn't really want to go in or have to... If, if things get really bad, she'll pull out her deck of cards, but she doesn't want to have to do that yet. Okay. Alright, so go ahead and roll notice. Alright. I gotta explain. So that is an eight. Eight? Okay. You notice immediately that the cabinet to your right in the corner of the room um, has a padlock on it. And that strikes you as odd because it looks like it's just a normal cabinet in a schoolhouse. Uh, then I guess I'll shout, cabinet, there's a padlock. Maybe it's something in there. All right. And is that your turn? Yeah, that's everything. I'll start moving in just in case I need to cover fire. Uh, with my cards. Okay, so you you are going in. Yeah, I'll go in. All right. Um, I need an agility roll from you, uh, just to avoid the desks and chairs. Alrighty. I got an exploding die. Uh, that's a nine. Nine. Okay. You and Annabelle are just ducking and dodging, and uh, you are. It's almost as if um, Eliza is dancing around these uh, thrown objects. And uh, you make it look very charming. Awesome. Yeah, flashes a smile as she's uh, reaches out and pulls up the cards. <laughs> Alright. And uh, last up is Annabelle. So she screamed the cabinet with the padlock. Is that the one to the... that one? That is this one in the far corner. Want me to shoot off the lock? All right, you can uh, go ahead and try that shot. It's going to be at a negative two because you're shooting through this uh, bedlam. Um, I have calculating. Oh, yes, and your card was under a five, so you can um, negate that penalty. So go ahead and roll. Even though I do realize, I did realize today that I probably shouldn't have calculating, but since we already have it there, I guess that's a thing. Well, maybe you you get your nerves uh, settled when you drink. Well, I mean, I, I don't have this technically the smarts for it. I didn't miss that part. Oh, you don't? Oh. Oops. No. I missed that rule. Um, but it's on the sheet, so. Um, I rolled a six on a d6. All right. Uh, so ten total. Ten total? You take aim from across the room. Which gun are you using? Um, I... Pulled out my Colt. 
All right, you take aim with that Colt. You put your offhand on it to steady your aim through the uh, desks and chairs, and you shoot that lock clear off of this cabinet. And the door swings open a little bit. And um, you hear something inside kind of uh, shift around and fall to the floor of the cabinet. I'll lock my movement to it. Okay. So you're walking through. Can I get an agility roll? I'm going to use a Benny. Okay. (laughs) Ten. Ten. All right. Good use of a Benny. Um, You... uh, hug the floor. You duck down low to avoid these desks and chairs as you make your way across the room and you scurry. And as you get closer, you can see um, what looks like human bones inside the cracked door of the cabinet. Found them. All right. And that was the last of that round. So Jericho gets a three. Annabelle gets a queen. Eliza gets a six. Brother Wolf gets the Joker. Ooh. So everybody gets a Benny. Oh, okay. Yay! All right, Thanks. everybody gets a Benny, and he gets plus two to his rolls. Jeez, okay. And you get to go whenever you would like. So right, you can right, choose right. to go now, or you can wait for a specific time. It's up to you. Does Deadshot only count if I get the Joker? Yes, it does. Okay, just making sure. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in in a minute. <laughs> All right, um, Annabelle can go first. Brother Wolf, do I uh, do I just light these th- these little bones on fire? We gotta bury them. What are we doing with it? Um, uh, preferably we would bury them. Oh, watch out! And uh, as as we're talking, she's just like dodging these desks and stuff. <laughs> Um, burying would probably be the, the right way to go about this. Okay. Um, make a smart troll, Annabelle. Can it be a cult? <laughs> um, sure. It can Sweet. be a cult. I didn't think that was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's appropriate. Five. Five? You know that even though he just said uh, burial would be preferable that burning it would also work okay cool sure brother that that sounds great i'll pull out um some lantern oil <laughs> okay <laughs> and just start dousing the bones all right i don't i don't think all right and then i will light it if i can okay um i'm just gonna ask for the agility roll to and if you succeed then you succeed on lighting it as well Six on a B6. So eight. Eight. All right. So you um, pull out your lantern oil, douse these bones, and uh, light a match. It lands directly in the center of these bones, and you hear behind you a screech <laughs> as suddenly every desk and every chair in this room clatters to the ground and everything is still. As this fire burns these bones. That works faster. Well, I suppose you're not wrong. However, I, I uh, suggest we uh, perhaps either vacate or at the very least put out the fire so that the schoolhouse doesn't go up. Alright. I'll start um, using my boot to put out the fire as okay. much as possible. All right, so you let it you let it burn to um, the bones were brittle. They were they've been here a while. Clearly, you're not sure why there was this body of a child locked in this cupboard in a schoolhouse. But you take a moment as the remains burn to ash, then you stamp it out with your boot. And you are in this silent schoolhouse. Well, that was fun. So what I'd use? Sure. I only got to shoot once, but that's okay. I will refill that one ammo. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a moment and uh, kneel in front of the now charred uh, remains, and I'm going to say a, a small prayer. 
Okay. And um, everybody can uh, take a Benny. Oh, right. Ooh, Just rake or, it uh, in. this situation. Five Bennies. Ooh, <laughs> mm, not sure about the rest of you, but I could really use a drink after that. Perhaps we head over to the saloon. Yeah, that sounds okay. Um, real quick, while the bur- body was burning, and as long as things weren't flying at my head, uh, I'd kind of like to look around the schoolhouse, see if there's any information of what the hell happened here. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll notice. Uh, that's a five. Five. All right. Um. You look through desks, you look through drawers, you look at the um, proctor's desk at the end, you find some old, tattered um, papers that have uh, letters and numbers etched out on them, uh, handwriting practice, things like that. You don't find anything that indicates to you what exactly was going on here vis-a-vis the ghost. Well, I guess after I've given it a good once over, uh, she probably get out a little notebook on her and write down the information. Uh, and then be like, well, I think a drink would be nice. I don't often partake, but that was rough. I'm All right. generally not one to imbibe either, but, uh, I mean, you go and hang out or something, I'm- I won't partake either. Y'all missing out. <laughs> well, I mean, I never said I wasn't gonna drink. I just said I don't do it quite often. Well, Brother Wolf, you're missing out. A warm feeling of whiskey down your throat. Ah, oh, it just burns so good. <laughs> well, I'm sure that is true. I, I, I will pass regardless. Well, you can be a party pooper. That's fine. Uh... Which way is the saloon from here? Uh, you don't know exactly where the saloon is. You do know that there are uh, more buildings further into town toward the north. My instinct um, is to sniff the air to find the booze, but <laughs> I'm going to pass on that. Jericho would say, well, if it's uh, any good saloon, usually you can find it on the main thoroughfare. All right. So you guys um, make your way out of the school and down 3rd Avenue towards the west, taking a right past uh, that abandoned looking building that you're not sure what it is from the outside and that two-story building directly next to the school. And as you are walking down Main Street, you see, for the first time, people outside. Holy crap, people exist. (laughs) There is a man walking towards you slowly. A um, cowboy hat on his head. He is flanked by two other men. They are openly uh, thumbing at their guns on their hips as they walk towards you. And uh, as they get within about 10 feet of you, the man in front says, Afternoon. What is it exactly you're doing here in town? Ah, well, I mean, we're just passing through. I mean, we have been a long time on that dusty road, and, well, we just got a hotel, and we're kind of moseying around seeing this wonderful town. (laughs) What is it you find wonderful about Coffin Rock so far? Well, I mean, while the architecture hasn't been well taken care of, it's still mighty pretty. I mean, when you've only seen, well just dust and cacti for the longest amount of time. It's nice seeing civilization. Uh, I'm Eliza. It's nice to meet you. Marshall Bryce, this is my town and I suggest that you all get out of here as fast as you can. I mean, is is there a problem? I I don't think we uh, went against any of the laws. I, look, I am mighty, mighty tired, and she's gonna start fanning herself. I just, it's been so long on the road, and 
if we could just have a night here just to rest. Uh, roll persuasion. <laughs> okay. I keep forgetting I have plus one to persuasion <laughs> every single time I roll it. That's important. I know. <laughs> I'm so glad we have a talker. All right, that's a six. Six? All right. Um, he says, well, as long as you make your way out of town tomorrow, I don't see a problem. As long as you aren't here to make trouble. Oh, uh, little old me. No, I mean, look, I'm just here to travel and hopefully uh, get some, uh, give some business to the local hotel. Seems like he's having a rough time of it, but uh, we just want to be able to rest here for the night, and if there's anything uh, at all, we're happy to help with things, but it seems like you've got it well covered. That'd be the truth of it. Annabelle is biting her tongue so hard right now. Well, we were just heading to the saloon, uh, but... If, if there's anything else we could help with. I mean, I'm at the hotel if there's anything. Do I look like the kind of man who needs the help from women folk? Oh god, no. You look much more uh, strong than anything I could think of. But I just never know when you need someone to talk to. Annabelle's just narrowing her eyes now. <laughs> he just, uh, he doesn't say anything. He just bits in the street. And uh, he and his deputies uh, turn around and uh, head off. When they leave, Jericho eases off of his uh, gun belt. He wasn't resting his hand on his gun, but it was definitely like on the buckle just in case things went south. Ugh, the law dogs. The more than thugs with badges. I want to shoot him so bad. Can I shoot him? Hold off on uh, that. Not Mitch yet. McGrew. We're here to find our quarry. Let's not become one. Besides, I bet it's his fault. Besides, I'm sure sure if we were to ask uh, Marshall there if he had seen a, or Mr. Archer, probably he'd probably paid off or worse yet, he'd probably take the money up from underneath us, claim that reward for himself. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but someone trying to get someone that's new as us out of town right away screams a little bit of guilt, don't you think? There might be more to Coffin Rock than we care to know about, but I know a lot of whiskey as he points over to the saloon, calling my name. Hell yeah. Bit of a rowdy group, aren't they? I just don't understand, like, your town's going to shit. You need to, like introduce and be polite to guests not send them off the second they're going to spend money well I mean they're scared of something you wouldn't ask someone to leave right away if you didn't have something to hide as long as we're gonna find out what the dude's hiding <laughs> I'm not usually one to pass judgment um, at all really but especially not usually immediately but um, it did seem a little suspect that um, he seems to want us out of town so quickly. Well, we'll just keep our ear to the ground and hopefully we can figure out some more at the scene. You can keep your ear to the ground all you'd like. I'm keeping mine to the sky. Uh, but uh, I guess we'll go in. <laughs> all right. The uh, saloon has a sign on it under the one that reads saloon that says six feet under rather ominous. <laughs> this town and their names, they uh, need a better job. We need somebody better to name them. Um, as you enter the saloon doors, tables are scattered haphazardly around the saloon. The place has obviously seen better days. The two windows flanking the front entrance are caked with enough dust to be almost opaque. A staircase with a rickety railing leads up to a landing, and several wooden doors lead to other rooms. A dirty chandelier provides feeble lighting even during the day. A scarred bar runs the length of the room. The stools are filled, day and night, with townsfolk and miners drowning their sorrows. The wall behind the bar is covered by a filthy, cracked mirror. The crack bisects everything reflected in it. And at the bar, you see a surly-looking barkeep who barely looks up at you as you walk in. 
and walk straight up to the bar. Barkeep. Whiskey. He uh, doesn't say anything. He pours it. Give the bottle. That'll be five dollars. Which is into a uh, pouch. Pulls out several dollars and puts them on the, uh, slaps them on the bar top. Slides it over. As soon as it's down, it's gone. He slides it away behind the bar. And I immediately start to pour myself and my uh, companions there. Uh, shot, maybe a double shot there for Annabelle. And uh, that's them out. That is um, some expensive ass whiskey. This better be good. She takes her shots. Nope. Burns the same. Yes. <laughs> Um, as you look around the bar, there is a uh, piano player at the piano who is not currently playing any tunes. He's kind of uh, leaning back against it, um, just sizing you up. There is a woman who is uh, looks to be the um, barmaid going around cleaning tables, uh, taking glasses away. Uh, there are four miners in the corner who you can tell their profession by the fact that they still have their pickaxes on them. They are um, leaning in close to each other, playing a game of cards. Um, and then there is one other man at a table who looks relatively well dressed. He um, occasionally glances at a gold watch. Um, he looks very nervous and he is constantly drinking. That kind of man. <laughs> well, if the p- p- if the piano player is staring at us, uh, Eliza will just kind of look up from her drink and give a little smile uh, at whoever's watching. I'm now, brother. One drink among friends. Uh. Again, I I appreciate the offer, but I'm going to have to decline. I do not imbibe. Well, I mean, if you sprinkle some holy water in, I mean, that's the same, right? You blessed it. You bless wine, right? That's what some religions do. Truth. Truth in those words, to be sure. However, uh, I'm already more than drunk on the Lord's love. All right, uh, if you excuse me, uh, <laughs> uh, Eliza's gonna get up and <laughs> at that and go to, uh, probably towards the piano player. All right. As you, um, are making your way across the room, he, uh, starts picking out a jaunty tune on the piano, um, and matching your steps across the room. Um, each step, there's another note. And uh, it makes for a brisk little walk over across the room. I'll I'll go over and be like, "Wow, I have not seen a, a person being able to play in a long time." Liza, my name's Mike. How are you doing? Yeah, doing all all right. I mean, uh, it's been a long day of travel. I'm just happy to get off the road for a little bit. Not many people come through Coffin Rock. What are you doing here? Oh, just kind of moving through. I'm on my way to a bigger city, but if I had to see one more cacti without being able to sleep in a bed, I don't know what I'd do with myself. (laughs) And he's uh, playing all the while um, as he's making eye contact with you. Uh, This town seems nice. Uh, I never really heard of it till I stumbled upon it, but uh, it's nice. I mean, the fact you guys have a piano in here, that's pretty nice, too. Yeah, I would say the Six Feet Under is perhaps the last, uh, the last good place here in Golf and Rock. No, oh, really? I mean, it seems like everything's pretty great. The whole time she's over there having that conversation, I am very slowly looking around the room, um, just taking note of any and uh, anybody and everybody, just keeping my eyes open. Uh, make a notice roll. Right. Uh, that's a six on a d6, so do that again, and seven. Seven? 
Yes. All right. Um, something catches your eye behind the bar. Uh, you see in the cracked mirror behind the bar. Hmm. Um, you noted on your way into town that the epitomous coffin rock is a large cliff face that stands north of town. So you're seeing it in the mirror now where the mirror is facing a direction that you shouldn't be able to see it. And you see on top of Coffin Rock a person who appears to be waving in your direction. And I, I see this in the mirror behind the bar? Yes, you see this in the mirror behind the bar. Uh, right. Um, so I will kind of glance over in that direction, see the individual waving from the mirror, and then I will turn toward the door to see... I, I'm, I mean, it would only make sense that it would be a reflection of something. <laughs> so I look towards the door uh, where the mirror is pointing. Do I see an individual waving? You can see out the window and you see across the street toward the uh, what looks to be the hardware store in a dilapidated building. And uh, you cannot see Coffin Rock in the distance out that direction, the direction that should be reflected. Hmm. And you do not see a person waving. Well, Ritz, I will uh, then just clear my throat loud enough for my compatriots here to hear. Um, and then I will kind of just look at them and lean into the table. Um, once again, not uh, one to pass judgment. However, something definitely seems to be off here. Do me a favor, uh, Brother McCraw. Look into the mirror behind the bar. Tell me, what do you see? All right, look in the mirror. Um, roll notice. Oh, that is a nine. Nine. You see, at first, just reflections of the uh, patrons at the bar. Um, they look gaunt, gaunter than they look in real life, and they look haunted. And then you look up above the crack in the mirror, and you see Coffin Rock. And on top of Coffin Rock, you see the silhouette of a small person waving. You're, you're referring to that person waving there? Yes, 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 indeed. If you uh, take a gander across the street there, where the mirror appears to be pointing, the reflection does not match reality. So I, I turn and look to see what he's talking about as I peer out the window. All right, and you see across the street, you see a dilapidated building, you see the hardware store, and you know as you are walking north up Main Street that um, Coffin Rock was due north and should not be in the direction that is reflected in that mirror. Do you, do you see what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that window's busted. Or maybe it's the mirror. I don't know, brother. I'm just trying to enjoy this drink. Well, far be it for me to, to uh, take that enjoyment away from you. However, uh, it appears that perhaps there is more pressing matters at hand. You know what? You're right. A barkeep. As he taps on the bar, draws attention. He grunts in your direction. Hey, I'm looking for a friend of mine. Maybe he passed through here. Perhaps he's staying here. It was by the name of Hank. Hank? Never heard of a Hank. Um, last name Archer. Hank Archer. Don't know any Archers neither. Does he look like he's lying? Uh, roll notice. Alright. Oh, right, because you said notice is like perception and also insight, right? Yes. Okay. That is an 11. 11. Okay, you can tell that this guy doesn't want to be talking to you, but you can also tell that he is telling the truth. He's, um, he's never heard of anybody by the name Hank Archer. Fair enough. Well, looks over, uh, takes a look at the wolf. Looks over at, uh, Miss O'Day, who's preoccupied. 
and looks at Annabelle. Oh. Either you fancy a card game? Sure. Not much good at them, but I have it a shot. As long as you can get those fellas there. It's over at the uh, miners. As long as you can uh, loosen up some lips there. We'll find out some more information about it and uh, lead on to uh, our quarry. I'll stick with my I'm not much good at gambling. Nor am I, but um, far be it for me to turn down a friendly wager of sorts. Alright, well, I'll go over there then and see if they want to play. I will get up and walk over to the three guys. Uh, there are four of them. Four guys? Yeah. <laughs> um... They are all drinking heavily, and they uh, are very clearly trying not to make eye contact with you as they're playing poker. You have him for a fifth? Uh, roll persuasion. Oh, but I'm probably not good at that. <laughs> persuasion, nope. I got to be four. Nope, that's three. Three? Uh, one of the miners says, seats are taken. Uh, hearing them turn down Sister McDrew there, um, I will approach the table and say, uh, Oh, come now, brothers. All of, There's always room for more at the table. One looks up at you and says, I don't think this is your particular place here. You'd be wanting <laughs> the church down the street. Quite right. Uh, however, I happen to be in the company of uh, other individuals that wanted to come here instead. Hence, I am here. Now then, um, if you wouldn't let uh, Sister here join the game, perhaps I could join. <laughs> roll persuasion. All right. Um, I do have charismatic, so I do get a free reroll. Okay. Nice. All right. So you said persuasion. That's this one. Okay. Yeah, definitely going to look at that reroll. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just so I know, when I do the reroll, do I reroll the wild die as well? Yes. Okay. Well, not much better. That's a five. Five? Uh, the miner that was talking to you looks you up and down and says, Fine, bring over a chair. <laughs> oh my, very good then. All right. And I'll uh, bring a chair and just kind of scoot it up toward the table. I don't want to play anyway. Now then, what uh, sort of gimmick are we doing here? What are we doing? Poker. Ah. Can't honestly say I've ever sat and played a game, but um, always willing to learn. Always willing to take a fool's money. All that. Whatever makes you happy. What uh, What are we betting? Um, and you see the in the center, it looks like they've each bet a dollar. Oh, quite right. All right. Um, I'll uh, reach into my uh, my pocket and take out a single bill and place it on the table in front of me. Okay. I actually have cards, so I could deal you cards. Oh, but, sweet. Um, I, oh, I I don't happen to actually know how to play both. So oh, do you not? I, I know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you need any, if you have any questions, let me know. I will deal you and I'll deal one other hand just for the table just to keep it simple yep, um, for sure. so how many cards am I supposed to give out well uh, technically it really depends on what we're playing um, a normal the simplest version the simplest version would be just five cards then all right you uh, each each player is dealt five cards uh, and then you are able to take one turn swapping out cards from your hand um, putting it back in the deck and then redrawing that many cards. Okay. I'm not quite sure why I'm giving the explanation in my character voice, but that's fine. All right. Um, you end up with a pair of sevens, a three, a two, and a king. Very good. Starting off well. Um, would I? Oh, I, I guess I would realistically wouldn't know the opponent's hand. Uh, I'll, I'll put on my my best poker face, which, needless to say, is probably. Uh, not great. Um, and then I will hand three cards back to the dealer. Um, uh, obviously holding on to... No, you know what? Um, I will actually hold on to the sevens and the king, and I will pitch back the two and the three. Alright. 
and deal out two new cards. All right, so you got um, an ace and another three, but you had gotten rid of your other three. Last. Well, what's the shot? Um, so how uh, how exactly does this work? Do we just show hands? Are we uh, upping the bid if necessary? What are we doing? Um, three of the other men uh, fold. So you're just against the one guy who was talking to you. All right. And he says, if you're wanting to up it, be my guest, but I'll be happy to take your money either way. Very good. Um, I will reach back into my pocket and I will throw another, let's say, I'll, I'll throw another five down. Uh, uh, roll Persuasion. Right. Or, or Performance, whichever one you'd like to do. Uh, probably the Persuasion, seeing as how I get the free reroll. Okay. All right, that's an eight on a D8. And then a five, so 13. 13. Okay. Uh, with that, you look confident and uh, guileless. You don't have a very good poker face. So you put that five down, and instead of matching you, he uh, throws his cards down in disgust, and um, you can take the pot on that hand. I will uh, <laughs> reach out to, to grab all the, the winnings. So you get four extra dollars. Yeah. Sweet. Um, and actually, he had a pair of jacks. But you were very convincing with your persuasion roll, so uh, he lost out. But did you have any questions for the miners as you're playing, as you continue playing? Um, yeah, uh, I'll look across the table at the individuals and say, uh, uh, beginner's luck. Um, be more than happy to play another hand if you'd like. And he deals, and we're not going to necessarily... Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so after receiving my next hand, I will uh, kind of peer at my cards and then look up at the, across the table at the individual who I was speaking with um, and ask, so as, as I'm sure you can tell, I'm a rather godly individual, let's say, and um, kind of been picking up on some strange occurrences since we've uh, my compatriots and myself have wandered into town um, what uh, what are the, the, the goings on uh, anything out of sorts here, here lately um, the miner next to you kind of um, punches his shoulders in closer and uh, says we just try to go to work come back, get drunk, and keep out of all that. If you want more information on that, you should go talk to that preacher or somebody else, but not us. <laughs> Alright. Uh, tell you what, thank you for the uh, the quick game here, and uh, the, the wealth of information that you have thrown in my direction. Um, I'll tell you what, next hand's on me and I will um, fold my cards and uh, just give each of them a dollar for the next hand. All right. So the four dollars you won, you give back out? Yep. Um, and then I will return to the table with the uh, other individuals, and I will convey the information I was provided. It appears that um, I was told that we, if we want to know more about the wickedness, uh, craziness, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's been seemingly happening since we've arrived, uh, we should speak with the pastor at the church. I think they just didn't want to play with you because they kicked their butt. <laughs> it's also possible, but um, a lead's a lead, no? That is fair. Well, once Eliza's uh, done flirting with the piano man, we can uh, possibly go over to the church, I guess, before we do anything else. Uh, I think I saw a, a store next door, so we could stop there if we needed supplies later. 
quite right. Uh, perhaps we should ask the piano man to sing us a song. <laughs> Wasn't there one other individual in here as well? Uh, yes, there was a man at a table with a gold watch <laughs> who was drinking heavily. He is drinking absinthe. Ooh, mm. the good shit. I can try to go talk him. Oh, you could try. I'm, I could try. I'm not. I'm not good at talking. But maybe can... he'll give me some shots. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go for it. Unless you want to try, you might be a better talker. <laughs> I'm. I'm more of a. Uh... Uh, forcefully getting answers than coursing answers. <laughs> Me too. We got so much in common. Um, <laughs> Alcoholism and all. I'm not an alcoholic. My, ma- my mama. <laughs> now she. Anyway, I'll go... Uh, I'll let Eliza have her thing first with the piano man. Um, I guess after talking to him... Does he seem like one to have loose lips, or uh, sh- does it seem like he's going to be quiet? I'm trying to see if I can coax information out. Um, He asked after what you were doing, but when you kind of um, dodged that question, he didn't seem like he much cared that you did it, and he just kept making um, small talk. So you get the impression that he's... Um, he hasn't given you anything significant yet. He's talked about the weather. He's talked. He's asked you about your travel. So, like more That's filler talk, it. not wanting to let information out. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. You don't get the impression that he's. Well, after seeing that, I'm not gonna go very far uh, with him. Uh, I'll probably move on over to the guy at the table. Uh, and ask, uh, approach, say, uh, do you have a ladder? And she reaches in her pocket for a ci- She has a cigarette. He, um, very shakily, uh, pulls a lighter out of his pocket and, uh, lights your cigarette. Um, she'll just kind of, uh, uh, take a puff of it and, um, just kind of lean over and say, You all right? You seem a little shaky. Uh, do you mind if I sit down? I mean, if you're expecting someone, I can go, but I, I haven't seen anyone as uh, quite as a snappy dress as yourself on the road, and it seems like you would make for good conversation. <laughs> well, please, by all means, have a seat. I'll sit down. And uh, takes a very long draft of his drink. I'll look over at uh, Brother McCrawl and go, uh... She's rather quick, isn't she? Woman's hard at work. I'd rather hurt me talking than me. I'll just fuck it up. Uh, sir, uh, what? I'm Eliza, by the way. Uh, I always like to make sure that I introduce myself. You never know when someone's gonna need a little bit of help. Uh, but I guess what brought you to Coffin Rock? I'm just traveling through. <laughs> well, you see, my name is Wilfred Hambly. And I am the mayor of this fine town. Really? That is amazing. I was just talking to the piano player over there, and I was talking about how uh, such interest in architecture. I mean, it uh, seems a little dusty, but nothing. A good little bit of fixing won't help. <sighs> I'm afraid... Coffin Rock needs a little bit more than a bit of fixing. Oh, it's, it's something that matter. The, mi- the mines have dried up. Oh my, I, that is awful. I mean, is, is there anything in particular? And anything odd happening? He, um, looks at you and takes a drink and he says, well, miners have been disappearing, but not from the mines. Oh my, I mean, that is sure a scary uh, sight to behold. Um, where have they been disappearing? Apparently uh, they'll go head toward the mines from the town and uh, never make it there. Really? That is so interesting. I've honestly I've come to town. I Look, I have been trying to find a place to stay and I had a certain 
person uh, write to me. Uh, t is there anyone named Hank in this town? Apparently, I was supposed to come here to meet him, but so far I've been stood up. Hank. Uh, and he rubs his at his temple and says, Hank. Name sounds familiar, but it's not anybody that I can, um, I can think of right now. Oh, well, if you happen to think of it, it would really, really help. I mean, I've come all this way, and I was supposed to meet someone here, and I was just, I guess I'll have to go back if I can't find anyone here. And he takes another drink, and he says, mm, not sure about any Hank. Well, uh, if there's anything you need, I think, well... I talked to the marshal, and, well, he was not very happy with us being here. I just, I was able to talk him into letting us stay for the night, but I'm just so, so tired from all the traveling. I mean, I'd love to stay for a few days. I mean, hopefully I don't get stood up for too long, but he might not be here yet. And he kind of just, um, takes a shaky drink and waves a hand to you and says, um... Just, uh, steer, steer clear of the marshal, and, uh, you should be fine. Well, uh, you seem a little nervous. I mean, I, I don't want to intrude. It just, uh, you look as though you're a little shaken by something. What's not to be shaken up by? Well, I mean, that's good Town's point. gone for shit. Mm. And, uh, he, um, shows you the back of his watch. And there's an inscription on it, and it's signed daily, and it's an inspirational message. It says, uh, Tempest Fugit. And, um, he says, I don't make good use of my time anymore. There's no, no real time here in, no good times here in Coffin Rock. Oh, I mean, well, I'm sure there can be other good times, but... Listen, I'm staying at the hotel. There's anything you need, uh, that lot right there, they're very good at helping out. I'm sure they would be happy to help this little town of yours. And, uh, he just kind of shakes his head and says, Don't know what kind of help you can give. Can't make the mines produce more copper anymore. Well, we might be able to figure out what's happening to the miners. I mean, no one's gonna want to move here for farming or homesteading if they aren't safe. Well, if you can figure it out, that'd be, uh, that'd be great, but I'm not gonna hold out much hope. Well, that's alright. You just leave that to me now. I'll figure it out. Uh, Eliza will, uh, just kind of give a nod and a wink and, uh, leave, uh, to go back to the table where everyone else is sitting and sit down and just kind of give the, uh, ew, like, yikes, uh, look to, as she sits down. <laughs> that seemed to have gone great. I mean, these people, well, at least I got somewhere with one of them. Uh, apparently the mines are a problem. They dried up. Hmm, dead mine means dead town. Pretty evident. That's the mayor right there. The pianist wouldn't really say anything but small talk and tried to double check why I was here. But they also said that people were going missing. Uh, miners would try to go to work and, well, they wouldn't be seen again. So, I don't know. Something we could check into. Right, right. Um... Did you, perchance, mention the supernatural happening uh, to the, to him? Oh, God, no, I wouldn't do that. You start mentioning that to these kinds of people, well, <laughs> they're going to think you're crazy and try to lock you up or hang you outside. Well, seems to me that if it's uh, if he's the mayor of this town, then he should be privy to that uh kind of information. Well, I mean, I, I'm fine with you going ahead and telling it. Just don't add my name to the mix. Uh, hold off there, brother wolf. What Miss O'Day tells us about, told us there about the mayor. You know, man seems pretty shooken up as is. Probably seen his fair share of spooks. Alone, the town around him is falling apart. Still, this does not 
give us any clear indication about who hired us, let alone where Hank is hiding out. Well, that was the other thing. I mean, I was talking to him. I tried to, to ask him about Hank. And, well, he, he said he had heard of one. But then he started, like, rubbing his head, trying to remember something. And I I kind of think he might know more. Or maybe he's trying hard to remember, but something stopped him from remembering. Uh, but he talked about that, something about time. That there's no more good times left. That he was wasting his time. It seemed odd. Well, the brother here got to speak to the uh, poker boys over there, and they said to speak to the preacher. So maybe we can get some answers there. Worth a try. You guys want to head over there, then? Post-haste, really. And also, before we leave, we could stop at the jet- oh, the store. I think I saw one next door. In case you want to get anything. But that can wait till later. I mean, we've uh, only just got here. I don't know how much how many provisions we would need immediately. Well, we've been traveling for a couple of days, so we might want to restock before we head out. I suppose that makes sense. So are you guys heading to the general store, or...? No, um, I was just mentioning it since I, my character would have seen it probably in passing. Okay. She'll glance in her bag to see how many bottles she has left. How long did it take to get here? Um, it was at least... Uh, you probably... You had access to alcohol on the train. So you didn't dip into your stash there, but it was probably about three days of riding. I was sure it was like you had to pay by the for the drink, which she would not have been able to do. So that's why I wanted to be sure. Okay, so to the church. Um, on on the way out of the saloon, um, I'll stop at the who who I am now aware is the mayor of the town, and I will uh, just kind of tap him on the shoulder and uh, say hello, brother. Hello. You seem to be out of sorts at the moment. Uh, Just know that myself and the Omnipotent are here, and if you need some assistance with anything around town, um, I saw you speaking to my compatriot, Sister O'Day, and um, just know that we're here to help. If you need anything, uh, please be sure to let us know. I will pray for you. He kind of, uh scoffs not he's not being intentionally rude or anything he's just very drunk and uh he kind of raises his glass toward you and says yeah the holy lord sure ain't looking out for coffee rock well he does work in mysterious ways i'm sure there's a reasoning for this part of the reason i'm here anyway like as i said um we are staying at the hotel and if you need anything just um give us a holler and he uh salutes you with his glass again I will just uh, give him a quick nod and then turn and walk out the door. Okay. So you guys um, head down, back down Main Street uh, and take a left onto uh, 3rd Avenue. You see along the way um, a couple of people who you now recognize to be the marshal's deputies lounging against uh, the outside of the hotel. They just kind of watch you as you walk down the street. These are... um, Two different men than the ones you saw before with the deputy. How many deputies does this town need? It's a good question. <laughs> but you um, continue on towards the cemetery and the church at the end of Daly Street. And it is a an, kind of an odd sight for out on the, um, the plains in the Weird West. Um, it has a tall steeple and it is um, whitewashed with a uh, blue roof. And it seems to be decently maintained compared to some of the other buildings in town. Uh, There are huge stained glass windows all around it on all sides. And are you going in? Uh, Yeah, I'll immediately just waltz right in as if I live there. Okay, all right. You open one of the large wooden doors at the front end and walk on in. And inside you see about 12 people Uh, men and women milling about, um, kneeling, praying in pews, performing prayer near candles, stuff like that. And the, um, everything is lit in rainbow from those stained glass windows. Ooh. Creates almost the illusion of bruises and old wounds on your faces as you look at each other. 
and then a second later when you look back it's gone but um as you walk in a uh a deacon steps out to um greet you and says hello brother hail and well met brother I give a, a slight bow. And he uh, reaches out to shake your hand. My name is Deacon Robert Plume. What brings you to Coffin Rock? You said Robert Plume was his name? Yes. Okay. Well, Brother Plume, I am Brother Wolf, uh, Wolfwood. Uh, Brother Wolf, if you will. And um, not, to be honest with you, not 100% sure what... Uh, my compatriots and I will gesture to the rest of the party um, and myself are doing here um, we just kind of ended up here and it seems like uh, some other worldly happenings are about ah uh, superstitions they take hold of everyone in town except for the most devoted for all things are explainable within the eyes of God <laughs> Far be it for me to, to say otherwise. Uh, are you aware of any strange goings on as of late? Well, I mean, the Reverend is out scouring the countryside trying to track down the source of these supposed evils afflicting the town. But everything is safe and just for us. And he gestures towards the um, assembled flock around him that are going about their business, praying and cleaning and worshiping and stuff like that. Indeed. Seems you keep a quite tight ship in here. Um, I noticed the church is significantly less dilapidated than a couple of the other buildings we've come across since being here. Only the best to honor our ward. Indeed. Um, I will walk to one of the uh, individuals who are sitting around praying to candles and um, just gently ask if I might join them. And um, this person just nods at you and doesn't say anything. As you um, walked forward towards the back end of the church, you notice that the um, altar is um, not wood or marble or something that you've typically seen it is copper and it is shiny and very reflective and reflects the church uh perfectly incredible uh pardon me deacon plume might you uh inform me about this piece here the altar that's um gorgeous oh thank you it is um to in honor of the uh, town's prospects, you know, the copper mines. Ah, that makes perfect sense. Quite a uh, nice looking craftsmanship there. And he kind of um, steps in front of you, like in between you and the altar. J uh, would I be able to pick up on, like he's purposely stepping in my way to like to uh, obscure my vision um or... go ahead and roll notice okay notice there we go okay uh that's a six on a d6 to a four so ten total there ten um yeah you saw for just the hint of a second um a, an expression pass over his face where he looked almost um angry and then it went back to that placid expression that he had. And as you look at this copper-clad altar behind him, you think to yourself that the reflection is almost too perfect. There don't seem to be any distortions caused by the altar's contours. Hmm. I will uh, take note of that. And then I will just kind of, I'll go back to uh, kneeling and praying with the individual I spoke with briefly earlier. Okay. And then I guess whatever the rest of the party wants to do for now. <laughs> um, I mean, Annabelle doesn't feel comfortable in the church, so she's probably just gonna sit in the back. 
Eliza did and not watch go people. in. <laughs> Eliza didn't go in. Okay. No, she's watching the the two deputies that were watching them. Okay. Yeah, I I think Jericho would have been doing the same, and um, I mean, if we're okay, I think Jericho would get, head back towards the hotel to interact with uh, said deputies. Okay. Um, as you approach them, one of them says, "What do you want?" I'm a paying patron here at this fine establishment. You're only here by the grace of Marshall Bryce. How gracious of him. If you excuse me. And they continue watching you very intently. Oh, uh, matter of query. Uh, Supposedly, boys wouldn't know anything about missing minors, would you? Keep walking. Uh, Where might I find your Marshall? He's over at the sheriff's office. Blash. And I will turn back and head uh, back towards uh, my posse. All right. And um, as you and Eliza are outside, you hear across town in the northwest direction a gunshot ring out. And then just as soon as that happens, a the bell in the steeple rings. I think like an immediate reaction, Jericho would probably like duck down, pull out his colt and try to find some sort of cover with the uh, sound of a gunshot and the bell ringing, not knowing what's happening at the moment, but not wanting to catch a stray bullet. All right. And um, you're able to like duck behind a, a barrel or a box that is sitting around near the outside of the church. And um, as you look around, you don't immediately see anything that is of danger. Uh, But you also notice that the deputies don't seem particularly perturbed by this happening. They're still just leaning up against the hotel. That's not okay. Uh, Yeah, Eliza's going towards the shot. Okay. I'd follow Miss O'Day. Would uh, would have Sister McDrew and myself heard the uh, the shot? Yes, you definitely would have heard the shot. It would have been a little muffled since you're inside. But the thing that you heard the loudest was the instant the shot went off, the next instant the bell rang inside the church. Did you do that? Is that a gunshot? I poked my head outside. I heard nothing of the sorts. I just heard the uh, the bell go off and. To be quite honest, it was uh, startling, to say the least. Well, there was definitely a gunshot outside. I uh, walk outside. <laughs> All right. At, at that point, I'll turn to the the pastor and just kind of give him a, a slight bow, and then I will retreat with uh, Sister McDrew outside. Okay. All right. So you guys are all outside. Um, are you heading back down the street? I think Eliza and Jerrica already started to walk that way, so if I see them in the distance, I'll run after them. Okay. Same. I'll follow suit. And, um, it's easy enough to catch up to them. Um, as you round the corner onto Main Street, you can see down the street, um, what looks like a couple other deputies, uh, dragging a body. Uh, through the street uh, towards the north. It's a bit unseemly in the middle of the day. Hopefully that poor chap has been given his last rights. I'll trust him. I think they shot him. Uh, I reckon you're right. As I said, they're nothing but thugs with badges. Why don't we go um, and ask the fine deputies some questions? Just to be clear, you're not talking these individuals here who are, you know, making away with a corpse? Yeah, those ones. Oh, good. All right. Uh, you all, you all can uh, can do that. I'll uh, I'll sit in the back. Eliza's already on her way over. She's going to go go and talk to them. Okay. Um, as you get closer, you see um, they're dragging a man who looks like probably he was a mire. He got dirty uh, soot covered clothes and um, he has a bullet wound in the in the back in the dead center of his back and uh, these deputies are dragging him um, 
north down the street in front of the saloon. Uh, I excuse me. Uh, hello. I forgot my accent for a minute, but I got back. Uh, <laughs> uh excuse me. Uh, hello. Uh, if you, you guys, I'm talking to you dragging the body. I'm sure he would want a Christian burial. And luckily, I know a priest. Uh, is there something we can help you with? I don't think it's any of your business. Oh, I mean, I just saw a person get shot in the middle of the street. I think it's anyone's business. Uh, he spits and he says, You're not from around here. You don't know how things work. I'm not from around here, but I do know the law. I don't know. Might be suspicious. I am friends with the mayor. And he, um, he touches his deputy's badge on his vest and he says, We are the law here. Hmm. Not very law-like to shoot a man in the back. Especially with not announcing anything? I don't know, that just seems a little odd. I mean, someone could have gotten shot, the kid could have gotten shot. Um, roll notice, everybody, except Eliza, because you were busy talking to them. Say uh, five for me. Six. Six? That is eleven. Eleven? Okay. Oh, damn. Uh, Jericho. Jericho was ready. He almost expected it, and he can see out of the corner of his eye, uh, over his shoulder, when the two deputies from the hotel round the corner and are approaching from behind. So you are not surprised when you hear one of them call out and say. These folk are asking a bit too many questions here. And uh, the ones that Eliza was talking to uh, drop the body and are going to start pulling out their guns. Well, of course they are. Brothers, please, surely this can be... We can, we can talk this out. There's no reason to resort immediately to violence. And uh, they are going to resort immediately to violence. Nobody ever <laughs> listens to me. <laughs> I mean, if they draw their guns, Jericho would immediately draw his. Yep. Um, Alright, so you guys are in the street. You have about uh, 30 feet from you in either direction. Um, two deputies on each side who are pulling their guns at you. That's just rude. Yep. They are rude like that. Just a question, who else is in the street? Um, you can see from, like, the doors of the saloon that, um, the saloon owner has taken notice of what is happening outside, but there is no one else in the street. Okay. Well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't want to waste PowerPoint. But I'm gonna have to. <laughs> Going first, uh, Jericho gets an ace. Um, Animo gets a four. Eliza gets a seven. Uh, Brother Wolf gets an eight. And those deputies get a nine. So Jericho is up first. That's how that worked out. Um, yeah, for sure. As, as they draw their guns, uh, Jericho reaches for one of his colts and... You know, just kind of does a quick fire as he's going to shoot at one of the uh, ones in front. Um, however, I am not. But I would. I get the sense they're they're going. They're they mean to kill, right? Because they ca killed this guy. So, um, you have no reason to suspect that they are not going for the kill because they okay. said they said that you guys are asking too many questions. Okay, then I, I want, yeah. Uh, be, being a uh, grim servant of death and having Ruthless as a hindrance, I don't think um, I'm going to pull my punches, so to speak, and try to disarm them. So yeah, he would just immediately just quickly flick out the, his colt and fire All right. at one of the ones in front. Uh, one of these guys? or Yeah, one, one of the men that was in front of me and uh, Eliza as they were oh, pulling okay. by. Gotcha. This direction. Okay, cool. So, um, north on uh, Main Street. Yes. Okay. 
All right, so go ahead and roll shooting. And I'm going to go ahead and spin a Benny on that. All right, pretty much same result, so I got a four. Four? I mean, four hits. Yeah, I was just hoping for <laughs> <far> more. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll damage. All right. Ooh. That's, uh, yeah, that was two aces. Um, so it comes out to a total of 17. 17. Oh, okay. All right. So um, you take aim with your gun and uh, hit this deputy square between the eyes. And he goes down hard in the dirt. And um, his compatriots all start shouting at the same time. Um, but you you killed that. You killed that man very quickly. That was uh That was several raises on his toughness. And I can I can still move, correct? Yeah. Uh, I would definitely look for whatever cover is in the street. Uh horse trough, barrel, whatever. <laughs> All right, so you managed to get behind a barrel. Whether or not it's going to provide you much cover remains to be seen. But um, you are no longer standing in the middle of the street next to your compatriot. Absolutely. All right, next up are the deputies. So, um, they are going to, um, one of them is going to shoot at you, Jericho, because you just killed um, one of the other deputies. And that's a five, so it is a hit. Um, let's see, two, three, six. Uh, that's four damage, though. What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is a five. Five? Okay. So um, it wings your shoulder, but uh, it's... It is barely a graze, and um, he goes, damn it, as he uh, got that shot off. And then this guy is going to shoot at uh, Brother Wolf, because he is in front of him. Oh, good. Um, That's a five, so that's going to hit. Rolling damage. Uh, That is six damage. What's your toughness? My toughness is five. Five? Okay, so you are shaken. Oh, good. So that means you will have to try to unshake at the start of your turn. Okay. Um, and then the other one on the other side of the street is going to try to shoot at Eliza because she was the one who was instigating this situation. Makes sense. It's kind of what she does. <laughs> In the nicest it's way possible. Um, kind of a strong bird, but okay. <laughs> uh, he rolled one, so he rolled a second one when I was confirming oh, whether or no. not he rolled one. So what he does is shoot through the crowd and hit one of his friends. That- <laughs> because that's what happens when um, extras roll one. You have to roll again to see get another one. And if that is the case, uh, they shoot an ally. Nice. Oh my god, and he aced on that. <laughs> um, so that is um that is twelve damage and his toughness is five. So that is a raise on his toughness, so he is going to die. <laughs> so he was aiming for Eliza and he shoots through the crowd and he hits his his buddy in the neck with this shot and with a gurgle he goes down in the street. Good job. I don't think that's what you were aiming for, but uh, need to look aim a little bit better. I'll look at Eliza and go. Clearly, the uh, the Lord's looking out for you today. <laughs> or something else. Either way, I'll or take it. It's just a shit shot. <laughs> um, next up is Brother Wolf. Okay. Uh, how do I go about unshaking myself? Uh, you roll spirit with your wild die. Spirit. Okay. Oh, that's a that's a good one for me. It's a twelve, so let's try this. Uh, that is a twelve on the d twelve, and then a nine, so twenty one. Oh my god! Okay, so you, <laughs> um, you are no longer shaken, so you can take your actions. If you had remained shaken, the move 
um, because you can only take uh, free actions when you're shaken. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. So um, you are free to act. Uh, there is a guy over here and there's a guy uh, behind you as well. They are each about 30 feet away from the center. Hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm not really one for uh, firearms or fisticuffs or what have you, so I'm uh, not going to be staying around here. Um, I think I will just follow Brother Necraw's lead, and um, I'll head in his direction and look for something to kind of punch behind as well. Okay. Uh, if, if possible, if I can get right up next to him, that would be preferable, but if not, if not uh, within a couple feet. Okay, you can get next to him. Alright. Um, would I be able to tell that he was hit? Um, he was hit, but it was just a graze. It didn't really hurt. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look him over and be like, you alright? Uh, it looks like you were hit there for a second. Asher's ruined my duster. Sounds like a no, but alright. Um... I will then. Uh, how do I how do I go about doing that? Um, I guess I'm. Uh, I don't know how to how to do this exactly. So I'm going. I'm planning on casting uh, smite on Brother McCraw. Okay. All right. Yeah. No problem. So you um, roll your faith. Faith. Okay. With the wild die. Faith with the wild die. All right. Uh, that is an eight. Eight? Okay. Yes. So that is um, plus four to uh, Jericho's damage uh, on his attacks. Sweet. Because that is a raise. Right, so I uh, I clutch the holy symbol in my hand that I wear around my neck. Um, and then I slowly uh, kind of, I break the chain that the holy symbol is sitting around. And I hold it out in front of me and point it in his direction. Um, and as I'm doing that, a small golden, uh, I want to say like an, yeah, we'll say like an orb, uh, extends very, uh, very quickly from my personage to his, um, and leads into the barrel of his gun. Cool. May the, may the, the Lord guide your shot. And then I will duck behind whatever I'm sitting next to, and that's the end of it for me. Okay. Uh, next up is Eliza. All right. Uh, well, so is there a way I can angle myself so the good preacher and the barman doesn't exactly see what I'm doing with my cards? Or am I going to have to worry about that? Um, there isn't much cover in the middle of the street. You could try to um, go the opposite direction from where uh, Brother Wolf is, but he would still be able to see you. All right. Um, well, I guess we're shooting then. Uh, so yeah, I'll pull out my, uh, from my, uh, I have a uh, holster uh, that is kind of concealable and I pull it out uh, from uh, the corset and uh, say, you really shouldn't have done that. And then uh, try and shoot him. Okay. So go ahead and roll shooting. Alright, that is a five. Five will hit, so go ahead and roll damage. Alright, one exploded. Uh, it exploded again. <laughs> uh, so you know, 12, I kill everything before I get to shoot. Plus two, plus one, minus one. So fourteen damage. Fourteen damage. Okay. So you shoot the man in front of you who um, had been still holding on to the dead body, and uh, he falls on top of it, and he is dead. <laughs> All right. Are you gonna move? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn around to the guy that's remaining. Say now. Do I need to do more messy work? Are you gonna work with us? Alright. 
No, don't work with this. I want to shoot you. <laughs> I didn't get my and, turn yet. <laughs> and next up is Annabelle. If he can't answer before I get to shoot him in the face. How far away is he? Um, he is about 30 feet away. Cool. I will pull out my Winchester then and shoot at him. Okay. Go ahead and roll shooting. That's a D10. Uh, I'm going to use a Benny because I want to roll it. Because I want to hit. Okay. <laughs> That's better. Um, I rolled a 16. Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> when you um, roll a raise, you do an extra D6 damage. So Wait. instead of, uh, what is it? Uh, 2D6 17, damage? technically, actually. <laughs> okay. Um... You only get one extra d6. So, so it's um, 2d8 is my normal damage for this. Oh, okay. And then plus a d6. That will be 15 damage. 15 damage. Okay. So that is a raise on his toughness. So you uh, shoot at this guy with your rifle and you hit him in the head and he goes down hard in the dirt. Oh no, I killed you before you could stop and give up. I feel so bad. <laughs> um, as this is happening, around the corner from the north, you see two more deputies and Marshal Bryce come running. So they are probably farther than you can see with the camera. <laughs> I'm gonna just move you guys so that I don't have to move my whole setup. Um, they are pretty far down the street from where you guys are, um, but they are coming towards you, uh, guns unholstered, and they look ready and out for blood. I told y'all you should have left! Marshal Bryce shouts, and um, we are going to go into the next uh, round of initiative. So Jericho gets a 9, Annabelle gets a 6, Eliza gets a king. Brother Wolf gets a six, and the two remaining deputies and Marshall Bryce will get to go when they get to go. So Eliza's up first. Okay, I want to go and hide behind a barrel so I can get out my deck of cards. <laughs> She's okay. been waiting to do this. All right, so um, you can find a barrel over here. Um, you are kind of far from them. Um. You are 17 squares away. What is your range on anything you want to do? Well, I am going to cast Conceal Arcana this round. So I kind of want to move okay. my normal pace, which is six, uh, to where I'm at least obscured from the Reverend. Because uh, they don't really like this kind of magic. Uh, and I'm going to cast Conceal Arcana. Okay. All right. So go ahead and roll spell casting. All right, that's a six. And I'm just okay. using power so, points for uh, this. I'm not dipping into any uh, deals with the devil. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Keeping it simple for right now. Yeah, I, I only do that if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've never had to. Okay. But yeah, so I have that up. So basically, they have a negative two to try and notice what I'm doing. Yes. Sounds good. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, I'm not going to take the uh, double action penalty. I'm just going to move up so I'm right and ready. When they start coming forward, uh, I'm going to try and position myself so I can uh, do a cone okay. effect. So I'm, I'm just prepping that. Okay, sounds good. Um, next up is uh, Jericho. Jericho will unsling his Winchester his back and as he is still uh crouched behind this barrel he just uses the barrel to uh, steady the rifle as he's going to take aim at the marshal okay yeah and i believe uh what's the range on the how many squares uh it is 
Um, shortest, shortest range is 24. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Okay. So, all right. So if I aim, aiming is an action in itself, right? Correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And if I aim, I can ignore up to four points of range attack penalties or add plus two to the attack roll if there are no penalties. Right. Okay. Character may not move or take other actions. Okay. So I guess that just adds a plus two and that will be to my next shooting roll? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm just taking aim at this point. Okay. Sounds good. So you are getting a bead on the marshal at uh, running down the street? Yeah, and I'll call out. I'll say, uh, they drew first, marshal, self-defense. And he just kind of... Uh, yells out a primal scream doesn't really there aren't any words in it and um that is his only response uh next up is annabelle fantastic um so he is how far i think you can hit him with my winchester yes you can hit him with your winchester all right so i'm going to Raise my arm, or my gun, because I already had the Winchester out, and I will shoot. Because I didn't move, uh, is it still just one shot? Just, uh, okay. yeah, just it's just one sure. shot. Alright, so d10 plus my d6, that is a 6. 6? Alright, that'll hit. Um, so go ahead and roll damage. It's 2d8 no matter what the distance is? Yes. Uh, that will be 6 damage. 6 damage? Okay. So he is, that is exactly what you needed to shake him up. You um, hit him and it hits him in the shoulder and he kind of uh, rears back and he uh, lets out a frustrated front as that hurts him a little bit. So he is shaken up. Um, and how far away from a building am I or from cover of any sort? Um, you can get over this direction to try to find some cover and um, try to find like a barrel or something to hide behind. Yeah, I'll just walk um, away from anybody else. So if they target me, they don't accidentally hit somebody else. Okay. So uh, next up is Brother Wolf. Good. Um, so from where I'm standing currently, am I over by, uh, were we over by the entrance to the saloon, or? No, the saloon is over on this side of the street. Oh, okay. Um, you are over by the hardware store? Um, okay. Uh, I guess I will take notice of, uh, all the individuals that are now you know, haranguing us, or whatever you want to call it. And, um, I think I'm going to try to make my way into the hardware store, because I don't want to be out in the street with all this craziness happening. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, easy enough for you to do. You can duck inside. All right, yeah, I'll do that. And, uh, just kind of look around to do it. Is the, the owner around anything? Uh, let me look. I'm trying to remember if this is one of the ones that's occupied or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. Uh, the hardware store. Um, the doors to the hardware store hang off their hinges. The windows are smashed and all the mining gears, gear and tools have been looted. So it is an empty building that you have ducked inside. Good enough for me. All right. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and duck inside the door there and um, just kind of duck behind one of the shattered windows and just try to keep eyesight on the goings on outside. Okay. Sounds good. And then next up is the marshal. So he is going to see if he can unshake. His spirit is not particularly good. Uh, he does not unshake. So he is um, standing there in the street, upset over this graze to his arm that he has gotten. And his deputies are going to advance and uh, try to make some shots. So this one is going to 
try to shoot at Eliza. So, Conceal Arcana, is that just to see what you are doing magically, or does that also conceal you, like, visually? Uh, only, uh, let me double check, but I believe it's, uh, just magically. Okay. But let me double check if I can find where it's located. Uh, it prevents the detection of arcane energies on one being or item of normal scale for an hour. And uh, for like the Deadlands rules, it's like negative two for trying to see if a huckster's guessing. Gotcha. Okay. So he is going to try to shoot at you. Not sure what you are doing. That is six. Okay. That is actually a raise. Uh, so. Oh, me? <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, so he. All good. Hey, that's how the game works. Um, but he rolled pretty bad. Um, that is eight damage. I have a toughness of seven, but I do have the the uh, armored corset, which is a negative two uh, ballistic damage reduction. Oh, okay. So hey, that too. that brings him down um, to six, and that will not shake you up. Woo! So. Um, he shoots at you, but um, it bounces off of your armored corset. It probably still hurts. Like, you were shot with a bullet, and it hit you in the armor, and so you're gonna have a bruise, but um, you are not injured. And the other one Makes is going sense. to shoot at uh, Jericho. And that is a one. Um, he is not facing the direction of any of his allies. Okay, yeah, that's not another one. So he's um, gonna Dick Cheney his friend there. It's gonna be weird. <laughs> Our trouble magnet is that only if my allies roll once. Well, he just he misses and he doesn't. Yes, it is. Yeah, so he um just misses completely. He goes wide on his shot at Jericho. Um, and now we are going to deal some more cards. I gotta say right off the bat, I do enjoy uh, thoroughly the the fact that. Uh, initiative changes every round. I think that's super cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Jericho gets a four. Annabelle gets an ace. Eliza gets a queen. Um, Brother Wolf gets a six. Uh, oh no, two in a row. Don't give me a thud. We can spend a Benny to draw another action card, correct? Yes, you can. I'm going to do that. Okay. Because a four, four is too low for me. Okay. Interesting. All right, you get a 10. That's better. All right. Um, uh, first up will be Annabelle. That's me. <laughs> I forgot my name for a second. Um, <laughs> all right, so I am going to shoot at the marshal again. Okay, he is shaken. Does that give me anything? No, just, just so you know, like, if okay. you do damage above his toughness, it'll be a wound. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Six. Six will hit. So go ahead and roll damage. Eleven damage. Eleven damage. Okay. So um that is math. Uh that is one raise, but he's already shaken. So that is two wounds. So he has two wounds. You hit him in the shoulder, and the bullet goes straight through, and you see him grab his shoulder and go, ah! And um, he nearly drops his gun, but he doesn't. He just nearly drops his gun. Um, and is there anything else you wanted to do? No. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to use a Benny to soak a wound, but I don't typically do that for enemies because I feel like that's cheap. So I'm going to carry on. Um, so next up is Eliza. Okay. Uh. So, I guess, Eliza, how far away are they? Um, uh, you guys can't see, uh, because you are over on this side of the screen. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. This one is eight squares away from you. Okay. So, they are in range. Uh, I'm going to cast Bolt. All right. Go ahead and roll spellcasting. All right, that is a four. That'll hit, so go ahead and roll damage. All right, uh, five damage. Five damage is enough to um, shake up this one. So um, out from behind this barrel comes a bolt of what kind of energy? 
Um, so like it it appears almost like these uh playing cards just like form like you see that she has like her hand of cards and she like throws like uh, a bunch of them and they just fly out almost like ninja throwing stars uh towards this uh in this energy this force of energy from throwing the cards okay and these cards go and they hit the um the deputy in the face and he like kind of reels back a little bit uh stunned and hurt and he is shaken up is there anything else you wanted to do or did you just want to keep playing behind the barrel uh hide behind the barrel if i if i can move forward while still uh keeping cover uh i'm trying to get them in aoe range okay um yeah you can move up uh further and you can still be in cover awesome all right after that next up is sorry suits are hard because <laughs> there were two tens um uh spades went first so yes. um yeah it's not remembering what the order is i know the order reverse alphabetical order it's being able to identify the suits in the heat of the moment is the hard <laughs> part for me um so it's hard diamonds clubs yep <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so the marshal is going first. Um, he is going to attempt to unshake, and he is going to succeed, even with that negative two. Um, oh, I guess I should have. I, it doesn't really matter if you want a spear roll. Um, uh, so he is going to. Um, pull out his Colt Dragoon and move closer and say, this is my town! And shoot at Jericho. So, shooting D10. That's a fun one. And he is rolling at a negative 2 because of his win. But he got a 10. And an 8. So that is 16. So that is a raise, so he is going to do an extra d6 damage. Um, he rolled like shit on the damage, so I'm gonna spend a Benny to roll better. And I rolled worse. I'm gonna spend another Benny to roll better. <laughs> she has it out for you, Jericho. <laughs> no, we just haven't been spending the Bennies and we're all done with tonight's session, so I figure I might as well. Oh, fair enough. Um, I think that was still the same roll anyway. So that mm -hmm. is um, 8 plus 1, 9. Uh, yes, my toughness is 5, but I'm going to spend a Benny to um, Oak. Okay. Go ahead and roll bigger. Um, when you uh, take a wound, you can... Uh, I'm explaining to Greg and our oh. <laughs> uh, When you take a wound, you can um, roll use a Benny to roll bigger and see if you can soak up the damage that you're taking. Okay. I, ro I, ro I rolled exactly nine. Oh, nice. All yes, right. I, yep. <laughs> so um, you're not even shaken because you got a raise. So uh, that was completely pointless, me spending those pennies. But that's okay. <laughs> that is good. Um, okay. So that was his turn. Um, next up is Jericho. So Jericho, this whole time, aiming with his Winchester, uh, as the marshal comes barreling down the thoroughfare, um, yelling, shouting, fire, and, and fires at Jericho. And it even, you know, like, I would say hits the barrel and splinters the barrel, but uh, Jericho just remains on point, not wanting to lose the shot. And as soon as that, uh, as soon as he fires, Jericho pulls the trigger on uh, on his rifle. So I'm going to make my shooting roll with a plus two for the aim. Okay. Okay. Um, no raises. That's going to give me a five total. Five. Okay. All right. Well, you hit. Do hit. And I am going to... Um, I'm going to... Where's my rifle? There it is. Okay. Roll the damage. That is a 17. 17. Ooh. Okay. Um, so yeah. <laughs> that is more than enough um, since he already had two wounds. Um, you 
taking aim uh, with your Winchester, um, you manage to shoot him dead between the eyes. The hat flies off of his head and he just kind of, um, his knees buckle and he falls like straight down to the uh, ground and he is dead. And the deputy that was right next to him is going to uh, shout and scream at this happening. And it's not having a good time. Can we leave one alive to find out what the hell's going on? Oh, that, that might be a good idea. Um, I reckon so. And he, because it is the deputy's turn next, um, the one is going to try to... Oh, spirit d4. Wow, they suck. Mm-hmm. Um, the one is going to try to unshake that is cocked. Um, that is a one, so he does not unshake. Um, the other one is going to shoot at Jericho. Um, because you are the most immediate target and you just killed the marshal. Uh, that is a five. So that will hit. Um... Uh, that is eight damage. What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is five. Okay, um, so you're just shaking. Yes. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'll I'll save my last penny for now. Okay. All right, so you're just shaking up. Um, it hits you maybe like in the uh, side of the thigh, and it it smarts a little bit, but it's not enough to really hurt you. Um, and then, uh, last up is Brother Wolf. All right. Uh, so I've been inside the, uh, the hardware store just looking out the window and I've been seeing all of this happening. Um, I look down the street and I see just the one individual left standing with the, uh... Well, there are two left standing. There oh, is this two. one and there is this one that you can't see. Ah, uh, well then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, well, seeing as how the marshal has fallen, hmm, uh, I'm feeling a bit safer uh, in this situation, so I'm going to step out of the hardware store and back into the middle of the street, or at least as far as I can get. Okay. Um, And then I will uh, take out my Bible and hold it aloft in front of me. And I will yell out to the uh, the two individuals there. Your leader has fallen. Mine is with me always. Do not make the same mistake that the others here have. Do not tarry. Put down your arms. And we may let you live. So you're trying to um, roll persuasion? Um, it's more intimidation. Okay. But sure. I'm not good at intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> well, roll it anyway. Because okay. you said that that's what you're doing. True, true. Uh, so intimidation would be it just a I don't think I even have that as a skill, so here we go. <laughs> oh, okay. So you roll a D4 and your wild die and you subtract two. Okay, cool. I think you subtract four, don't you? Because of your one Oh, right. Are you mild mannered? Yes. Okay, yeah, so you're subtracting four, so it's a D4 minus four. Go ahead and roll. (laughs) Okay, I sure did. And um, I rolled a one on the D4 and a five on the D6, so it comes to a one. Okay, all right. So um, the uh, deputies do not look too inclined to listen. Yeah, I get that. (laughs) Uh, you You don't cut a particularly intimidating... But for perhaps our final round of initiative, um, Jericho gets a queen, Annabelle gets a six, Eliza gets the joker. So everybody gets a Benny. Woo! At the end of our session, everybody gets a Benny and you get plus two to your rolls. Uh, Brother Wolf gets a 10. Oh my gosh. And the, <laughs> the other, the deputies get the other joker. <laughs> what? Oh my God. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. <laughs> okay. Um. I don't know who goes first in that situation. Uh, between the two jokers? Yeah. Um, 
trying to recall. I don't think, I think, I want to say black supersedes red. Okay. Uh, because that's how, I mean, because spades comes before hearts, which mm. is black versus red and so forth. But, um, or you could do, I don't know, uh, if you want to do an old fashioned like agility roll off or something like that. But otherwise, I'd say black comes before red. Well, let's give these deputies one last chance at life because they got the black <laughs> Um So they are going to go first. Um, and uh, this one is going to see if it can unshake. It did. Yep, that was a total of six on a d4. So um, this guy is going to shoot at Eliza because she is right there. Ooh. All right, that's a total of seven, so it's not a raise, um, but it is a hit. Uh, that is eight damage. Um, toughness is seven, and then if it's bullets, uh, damage reduction two. Oh, right. So it doesn't hurt you. You're not even shaken. Okay. Forgot about the armored corset. Darn. Um... And the other one is going to uh, shoot at Jericho. And that is... Ooh. Okay. That was uh, 15. So he gets an extra d6 damage. Rolled kind of like shit, though. Um, Nine damage? What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is five. I'm going to go ahead and spend a Benny to soak. Okay. Because I'm already shaken. So. Yes. Go ahead and roll bigger. Eleven. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So you don't take uh, either of the wounds. All right. But I'm still shaken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, and then next up, uh, Eliza can go if you would like, because you have the Joker. Oh, you yeah. I'm... Eliza is just gonna look at them and just, just go. You shouldn't have done that. And uh, sprays out her cards. If she can get in range, I would like to use burst on them. Uh, yeah, they're in. They are both in first range. They're very nicely lined up too. You are right here, so you are able to get them. Awesome. So go ahead and roll spellcasting. Got an ace. Okay. Uh, so I got uh, eight plus seven, fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So you do an extra d six damage. All right, and that is a total of twelve damage. Okay. Uh, that is enough to kill them both. So you see across the street from behind the barrel, a spray of playing cards come um bursting from behind this barrel. And they look remarkably sharp for playing cards. One embeds itself in the eye and the other directly in the forehead. And both deputies fall to the ground dead. I don't know what kind of playing cards those are, but I'm glad you're on our side. <laughs> yes. That's the last two deputies, right? Yes. So there are now uh, seven people dead in the street. That reminds me, um, each time somebody died, you heard the bell of the church ring. So with that final two deaths, you heard bing, bing. And um, so the entire time you were having this firefight, you heard um, the bell ringing. How does a good pastor know that? Well, so day we were looking to leave one of them alive. I mean, they tried to shoot me. I can't help that. To be fair, I forgot I said it. Fair enough. <sighs> Maybe we need to go have another talk with that pastor, because uh, he seems to have eyes and ears everywhere when it comes to deaths of people. I mean, definitely. We could also, now that there's no marshal, I guess we could search his office. I'm gonna go search him first. While uh, while they're going around, um, 
checking out the bodies, looting, what have you. Um, I'll just go to each of them individually and say a small prayer, give them their last rites. Okay. Well, um, and next time, perhaps you will uncover the rest of the mysteries surrounding Coffin Rock and uh, determine what it is exactly that is happening here in this strange little small town. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Please come back in two weeks to hear part two of this shooty group of awesomeness and also Brother Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I appreciate you lumping me in there. I appreciate it. Well, I didn't want to... You don't shoot things, so... Nope. Sure don't. Anyway, um, once again, I'll let you guys say where you can find everybody. So let's start with... Let's go backwards. Let's start with um, Mary this time. All right. Uh, well, I'm Mary Kate Mead. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at NerdOnWheels15. Uh... I'm also on the GM tables, uh, different streams for uh, Tales from 2000s at uh, 8 EST, and then uh, Heroic Journeys at 9 EST on Saturdays, uh, and Tales from 2000s is on Tuesdays. Um, But yeah, uh, stick around on my Twitter channel, I'm usually uh, doing something. Yeah, my name is Alan Holloway, and then you can find me on Twitter at CFTRPG, and you can also find me on uh, YouTube and Twitch at CFTRPG. And Wednesday, or every other Wednesday, you can find me running Savage Ravenloft, which is a Savage Worlds adaptation of Curse of Strahd uh, that Alan plays in on uh, my Twitch channel, and then on Fridays over at twitch.tv slash mini terrain domain, I run a fifth edition Curse of Strahd campaign. Uh, So lots of uh, Ravenloft going on in my world right now, but I particularly really love that campaign setting. So uh, yeah, but anytime you can find me uh, on Twitter and I'm usually running something or playing at something, so. And last but not least, Ellen. Um, I'm Ellen Delito. You can find me at Ellen underscore Nina and um, find me running uh, my Savage Worlds uh, fantasy podcast, uh, The Birdhouse Mystery at Birdhouse Mist M-Y-S-T on Twitter and as Alan said, uh, every other Wednesday, um, doing spooky stuff in Barovia <laughs> um, having lots of fun and thank you Nikki and Greg for having us, this was really fun oh, of course, what? thank you for running this this was great it's only the second time I've played Savage Worlds, and then it's the first time for Greg. Yeah, you guys are doing cool. great! <laughs> well, I listen to your guys' podcast, so <laughs> if you want to learn how to play Savage Worlds, just go listen to their podcast, because honestly, you, both CFT, RPG, GM Table, and Birdhouse Mystery, listen to those, because it's pretty easy to catch uh, the show, or catch on as you're listening to it. But yeah, you guys can find us wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, Please check out next Thursday. Our episode four will be out for Behold Clearlight. And go talk to Greg on Facebook at Beholder to No One. And check me out on Twitter at Beholder to No One. And that's all. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.